Hey guys, welcome back to ADSR FMA Tutorials. Make sure you get yourself subscribed to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. We're starting a new feature this month and we're going to be looking at the kind of cause and effect in the FM matrix in FM8 and kind of FM synthesis or frequency modulation synthesis because I think one of the requests we've had most with FM8 is the kind of how and why of the kind of FM matrix and just the reasons why we kind of you root one operator into another to get a certain sound and and kind of how that relates to these ratios here as well and also the kind of envelopes so and hopefully taking this angle rather than just looking at kind of producing sounds within genres will help kind of benefit your kind of sound design capabilities with FM8 so start off a little bit of kind of basic stuff without delving too deep into kind of frequency modulation synthesis is essentially using these operators here in the FM matrix and the frequency of these operators to affect other operators so we're modulating for example if I turn E on and route this to the output and um, then use F to feed into E we're actually modulating operator E with the frequency of operator F at the moment so effectively frequency modulation is going on And in this instance, because basically with frequency modulation synthesis, we're using modulators and carriers. So in this instance, F is the modulator and operator E is the carrier. It's carrying that signal and it's being modulated by operator F. And this method of synthesis leads, especially with six different operators, and you've got the noise and you've got the filter as well, and also you've got about 35 different waveforms and use selecting different waveforms and using kind of like frequency modulation to modulate another kind of operator is going to lead to different results so just the scope for sound design with FM8 is just huge so I mean at the moment I've got a sine wave modulating operator E if I change this to like a format wave get a completely different tone so one of the things that I kind of keep an eye on when I'm doing sound design with FM8 is this it's kind of like it's almost like a sort of frequency analyzer up here and you can actually go to the spectrum and you get a kind of more accurate readout of what's going on when you start to kind of start modulating stuff but I tend to without being able to kind of flick to this all the time I mean one way of approaching sound design would be to keep this kind of spectrum analyzer up here and start doing all your routing and stuff but I like to do it on the ops page where I've got I can I've got this minimized kind of view of what's going on but I can also affect the ratios and the waveforms and stuff like that uh, and something that I kind of keep my eye on on this is when it turns into something like this you're just going to get that horrible white noise so that's that's when you know you've kind of gone too far with kind of pushing these these kind of like operators into each other and just you fed them back too far and you just get that kind of white noise which is you know used subtly or kind of more creatively you can get some really nice mid-range kind of lead and bass sounds with that but just you don't want it too much because it just destroys the sound so one example a cool example of just some very simple kind of like sort of frequency modulation synthesis is if I take reset these operators if I take the output of operator E and root it straight to the output full volume and keep operator E as a sine wave and the ratio at 1 and then use operator F to modulate the frequency of operator E but I'm actually going to change the waveform to a temp format waveform and take the ratio down to 0.25 and Omlab did a tutorial recently looking at the ratios in FM8 and how they relate to kind of octaves and pitch and stuff like that so with them set at 1 
if you change the ratio to 0.5 you're actually taking the pitch of that operator down by one octave so if you took it to 0.25 you're taking it down by two octaves if you took it up to two you're taking it up by one octave and you know so on and so forth so quite important to understand that kind of relationship between ratio and pitch and stuff so at 0.25 feeding into operator E get that quite nice sound it's quite you know it's basic sound but and when you do stuff like this I notice it sounds quite cool with that kind of fade in so with that tone kind of generated and we're using this frequency of this waveform into E and we're actually going I mean sometimes when you push these values up to 100 you get quite a sort of messed up kind of white noise sound but because we've used a sine wave that's quite a smooth kind of waveform and and the tent formant is kind of the contrast of the waveform gives us that quite nice sort of crisp <laughs> but kind of like mid-rangey tone and also this re relationship with the ratios is quite important here so if I took this to point 0.4 I get quite a discordant tone of 0.6 you know you start to get into like chord territories but 0.25 it's still like a pure kind of tone so what I've shown you before about the volume of this going up before, if we look at operator F now, really cool thing we can do, tempo sync this, zoom in a little bit, and then just back the attack of this off. So you're getting that, you can hear that sine wave at the start of the sound, and then it turns that frequency modulation kicks in, and we're getting that kind of like, almost like a growl type effect. Uh, and a really cool thing of these envelopes is when you start looping them so at the moment it kind of like loops up and sustains if I control click in here I get this dot, dotted line and now this is a sustained loop so check the mode to fix so this kind of end sustain point stays here and it's kind of looping it's nicely synced there the 2 over 8 pull this right down <laughs> We've got quite a cool sort of start for you know a bit of a kind of wobble sound or a growly sort of bass so if we start to use some of those kind of basic fm synthesis principles to build a bit of a bass sound we could start off here and look at maybe operator e and make this a real low sine wave so 0.25 taking it down two octaves And we just got this deep sign, um, and then I think, yeah, okay, we want to add some mid range to that sign. So go 0.5 on this second operator or operator F. Maybe not use a tenth formant, something a bit lower, like a four formant. Get a bit more mid range in that sound. But it still sounds quite puny and then this is when you can start to use frequency modulation and go right root E into F it sounds quite nice and some people tend to say you know you use kind of sine waves and soft squares and some of the more sort of smooth kind of simple waveforms as modulators and the more kind of like complex like format and TX waves is kind of like carriers but I think there's kind of no real sort of hard and fast rules about it it's about experimentation and I know to look for like format waveforms or TX waveforms when you want to rough up quite a smooth sound or if you want to kind of smooth out quite a rough sound then use some of these smoother waveforms but it all sounds good in moderation so it sounds quite nice sounds a bit more brittle we can create a little feedback loop there the frequency modulation E's rooting into F 
So it's modulating F, which is then modulating E and just carrying that signal out, both of these, straight to the output. This is a great tone, a classic sort of FM tone. But if you notice, I'm going into e, into F from E at 17. 28 is just too much and it's just destroyed the sound, so... So have to be careful with these kind of like figures in here and just not go too crazy. The same with E going into F going into E. Just raising it by about five and we just the sound's gone. So at this stage I can get a bit more deep character in there. I take operator D 0.125. So going a further octave down on that ratio one octave lower than E, two octaves lower than F. I could keep it as a sine wave for now, turn it on, and introduce this into the sound. And get quite a deep tone. You notice we're getting quite we start using frequency modulation these operators aren't key sync so we're getting the more kind of like routing and feeding back and stuff we're doing in here the more of a kind of variation we're going to get with each new key press because these these waveforms aren't really triggering with a new key press so we key, key sync all of these nice consistent tone but there's almost too much going on already really so maybe need to take the ratio of D up to 0.25 Introduce some more operators here, key sync them to begin with. So a sawtooth is always good for beefing up the mid range of a synth sound. Turn on operator C. Sounds quite nice, a bit electro y. Take this ratio down. Take it down again. Sounding quite nice at point 0.5. And another cool thing you can do in this FM matrix is feed these operators back into themselves. So again, you saw that boosting up there and just killed the sound. But don't really want going on. If you use subtly you can get some really nice kind of tones and characteristic in the sound. You've got quite a sort of dirty kind of hollow bass kind of sound emanating here. Uh, another cool thing we can do, say with this further operator, operator B, turn on key sync it, it's to create a chord like we were doing before, but you have to be careful in this instance, say if I was going to go 0 0.75, I'm going to create like a sort of, I think it's like a fifth, a bit of like electro chord. So it's all about experimentation really here because 0 0.75, 0 0.8 gives you a slightly different chord. Discordant, 0.6. Quite a nice chord sound. But I notice when you start rooting this operator B, it kind of like, so basically it's not going up an octave here, it's kind of going up a couple of semitones. Root that into F and it just it sounds 
it's not very nice at all. As soon as I take this to 0.5, it's kind of back in sync, the, 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 the sounds kind of come together again. So what I tend to do if I'm working in chords like that is go 0.6, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Rough it up a little bit. I think I could dirty up this chord sound a bit more, turn on operator A, and use one of these format waveforms, because I know these have quite a rough sort of sound and make sure the ratio, with this kind of ratio being 0.6 I'm either going to make this ratio 0.3 see what it sounds like I'm going to make it 1.2 or 2.4, basically I'm going to go in divisions of 6 so probably 1.2 was the nicest so But four format waveform is a bit too rough for this sound. It's not really kind of doing any sort of adding any kind of nice vibe. So maybe take take it to a sign. And the same the other way around. If I took the output of F now, fed it back into B. Sounds pretty horrible because we've got these different. It's not a hard and fast rule really, but when you start stacking up this frequency modulation, and then you take the use an operator as a kind of like modulator to modulate the frequency of another operator, and you're not keeping sort of in context with these ratios, you can really sort of like just knacker the sound. So be careful of that. And so when I'm doing sound design with FM8, this is what I tend to do is loop a kind of sustained C3 note or and just kind of work that FM matrix and the waveforms and the ratio and stuff until you've got quite a nice tone. And then, you know, it's just the, the better starting point you have for a sound. You're filling out with that kind of mid-range frequency. You can then move to the master section, boost the voices, turn that volume down. Add a bit of digital bit crushing. Detune them. Start adding some effects. But just getting that kind of FM matrix right in the first place is sort of paramount with sound design really. So there's a kind of like starting point for just the kind of looking at how we can get into some sound design and the FM matrix in FM8. We're going to be looking at this further in the next few tutorials and hopefully just kind of enhance your sound design skills with FM8 and just give you a bit of insight into sort of kind of getting our head around the kind of FM matrix and the, and the kind of cause and effect, I guess, really, of all these operators. So, yeah, any questions about this tutorial, please get in touch, let us know, and uh, make sure you get yourself over to the website, fmhtutorials.com, tons more tutorials, and making various different sounds with FM8. And, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. All right, cheers. Bye.